Hey, Mark. Hi, Doug. Uh, how's it going? Good. I'm not trying to find through the myriad of my windows, but meeting notes. That's up here somewhere. And they paste the link in there. Oh, you got right. it. Are you seeing the meeting notes? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Not some corporate secret website. <laughs> Are you going to be on the call this Thursday? I anticipate being on it. Okay, yeah, cool. Because I'm technically at a face to face meeting most of the week. Um, I am hoping to step out for that phone call, but in case I can't, I may ask you to yep. go ahead and moderate it. Okay. okay. Sure. Cool. Thanks. <clears throat> I'll make sure I leave my uh, the meeting before early yeah. today. Set up. Yep. Good is coming up pretty quick. Yeah, I think it's going to really sneak up on us. We need to uh, need to figure out what what to finish off on the zero point one. You know, I saw the camel case change the they to finalize HTTP JSON format. There's yeah. Of, there's a couple of other ones that would be nice to polish off. Yeah, but on the positive side, it's all kind of smaller things to me, which is nice, as opposed to really big controversial things. So that's good. Oops. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. How's it going? It's so weird when you're sharing just that one window, but we can still see your mouse moving around and you clicking on things that we can't see. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. Wait, what was that? Well, I, 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 I believe you're only sharing one window, right? Yeah. Well, we can still see your mouse as it goes over the window. And so if there are other things on top of that window, you can see <laughs> your mouse moving and clicking on stuff, but it doesn't align with what's being shown to us. So it's kind of weird. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's, it's neat. So I'll just give another minute and now there's a couple of people that said yes this time that aren't on yet.
I can never spell Huawei. <laughs> I'm such a dick. All right, why don't we get started? So the, the intent of this uh, meeting is to talk about interoperability of different projects using cloud events. And, you know, maybe it's a little bit early, but I think as we're finalizing the spec, it makes sense for us to start thinking about how, how would we see projects actually incorporate cloud events, be able to prove that we can move these cloud events between these projects either as producers, middleware, or consumers. And I'd like to open it up to you know, the, the call and have us start brainstorming on what do we think would be a compelling demo of cloud events with respect to uh, showing this interoperability. Anyone? No one? Well, I can, I, let me start, even though I've already talked way too much in this forum. Um, <laughs> um, so I can tell you what we have in mind in terms of, so from, from the Microsoft side and, and how we think about integrating, integrating this so that we can figure out what the demo might look like. So we have, so our product that will use this is uh, Event Grid. And event grid is effectively a uh, eventing fabric that sits underneath the Azure platform. And more and more services are gonna are raising their events out. So if you are adding something to a storage um, account or a blob, then uh, the blob th that storage account is raising an event um, about that blob being created, and then you can go and react to it. So, and we're combining that in our world with um, Azure Functions. So that's our equivalent of Lambdas. And uh, also with Azure Logic Apps, which is um, a, um, there's an AWS thing for that as well. Um, it's a workflow, it's kind of a workflow, serverless workflow engine. And then is, that we, like, I, is that the same as step functions with AWS? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, okay. that's the name. I, I always have a hard time remembering what the AWS things are called. Um, and uh, the other thing is, uh, and then we can also integrate that event flow with um, our event hubs. So that's the kind of the Kafka equivalent roughly, um, so that you can go and archive events and you can go and, and do, um, 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 you, can, you can process events later. Um, and uh, we also integrate them with queues. So that's kind of our internal flow that we, that we use. And obviously we want to go and open that up to everybody else. So, the events that are being emitted today from Azure are already subject to a set of constraints that we set. Um, so it's not completely wild west um, how teams can express their events that flow through Event Grid. Um, and what we're planning to do is do a mapping of that canonical format that we have to cloud events and then just make it possible for us to go and to push towards cloud event consumers and um, also receive from cloud events um, producers. So I could, so potentially I could, I could tell you that I want to subscribe to a cloud events format. Uh, yeah. So that's, I think that's going to, uh, that's how it's going to turn out is that, um, you want, if you want to have a notification from a storage blob, uh, from a storage blob accounts about new blobs being created, then you will be able to wish for, um, a cloud events format and then we'll push that to you. You know, what, what kind of time frame are you looking at for having that capability in prototype stage? Um, we can make a um, we can make a mock up of how that will look um, fairly quickly. We can do that within a week or two. 
Um, obviously, product integration is uh, um, something that will take a little bit more time, also because of, of where we are in terms of stability. But, um, and spec stability, I mean, but um, we can make something that looks very much like what it will look like within a very short time because we have a pretty clear notion of what that should look like. So we can we can make a demo. Effectively, we can make a demo uh, with a little bit of hand waviness. Okay. It, and then, as as I've mentioned in the past, we have a uh, open source project called Dispatch, which layers above uh, OpenFAS and Riff. You can take have your choice of FASs underneath. But we we're using cloud events as a common substrate within within our um, event bus. And so, in fact, uh, yesterday I was doing doing some updates to it based off of uh, it was originally implemented, you know, maybe a month or so back where we had a different spec and I updated it to the latest spec. Which means you take an event in on one side and then you push it out in different uh, rendering on the other side? For the most part, we, we will convert existing events into cloud cloud events and then use that as the common uh, format within within our eventing. Yeah. Do you have ours? Uh, do you have uh, the event card stuff already in integrated into that? Not yet. Not yet. We 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 are uh, working to integrate external events uh, to be able to uh, pull in uh, different clouds. Right now, we 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 do have different event sources. Uh, one of which is like vSphere. Uh, oh, okay, but, I see. So it, I'm not familiar but, with, so what, what kind of events does vSphere emit? Like, oh, th things like uh, create, delete, VM, uh, different, different uh, lifecycle management events that are occurring uh, based off of uh, the, the platform. Okay, great. Um, but but okay. we have we, we have a we have flexibility to be able to create additional uh, event drivers, and so it should be easy to do if there is an external event uh, source that we can hook into to be able to to consume cloud events directly. Mm -hmm. Could you emit cloud events too? Yes, yes. So right now, the, the the main use of it is to send the, the cloud event into. A function, so being being able to use Riff or OpenFAS uh, as a, as a function fabric. Um, I'll chime in. Um, I we have an analogous use case, an analogous situation um, where we have event sources and um, Google Cloud functions and. Um, you know, can also do analogous prototyping. We don't, obviously wouldn't go into production when the specs in flux, but creating um, a bridge that's, uh, that, that can go between the things, I think is the demo that I've been itching to create. And what about um, the other folks on the call? What, uh, what kinds of things do you have? Hey guys, this is Chad. So at Oracle, we've got a couple layers to this. One would be our event service. Um, there's nobody on the call at the moment representing the event service, but they're integrating cloud events into there so that they can both receive and emit cloud events and transform uh, into a cloud events format. That service will be receiving events from uh, a lot of different Oracle applications and SaaS offerings. Um, I need to check with them exactly what we're going to be announcing around CNCF, KubeCon timeframe. Um, but the stuff that we're working on on the FN project side is is supporting cloud events natively as an event type for FN project, which is open source. Wait, what was that last thing you said? I'm sorry, I was typing. Oh, yeah, no worries. That's uh, the FN project. Oh, right. That and so what did you say? So if that's currently open source? Right. That's open source, yes. And we're, we'll be announcing support for cloud events at the event with, in the, inside of FN. So, that, Doug, that, Doug that, that actually begs a question as to, um, you know, that might be on the agenda item for this week is, 
what kind of PR do we want around uh, KubeCon? Right. So I think um, I'd like to see what we can actually do. And then I think that's a natural question that we should spin up. Um, yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know that the PR question is something that we need to worry about in this call. Fine. Yeah, I mean, I think Austin has been working on the um, has had and somebody I've forgotten his name working on the uh, website very much in anticipation that like we want to have a nicer presence on the internet. Um, right. That uh, that I think that like we we want the the what we've talked about is that the repo and the website would be like welcoming to people, whereas right now it's um. It's getting there, but it's not quite there. So Chad, do, sorry, I think I might have cut you off. Do you want to continue? Uh, oh. No, no, I think uh, that's, that's it for us for now. Yeah, this is Louis. Um, from Huawei, we have a, um, a, a tool that can run um, on your laptop or a sort of a tool where you can actually uh, be a consumer of events and be able to evaluate uh, various functions, um, essentially cloud functions or Lambda functions, whatever you want to call them. Is that, is that a development system? tool or is that like for desktop apps? Uh, this is really a development tool. So it's really uh, sort of what you would call it a sandbox for uh, evaluating um, various uh, cloud functions. And that supports uh, cloud functions from different providers? We can um, add that functionality. So, you know, once the uh, cloud event is firmed up, we can easily add uh, the ability to um, consume those events. Is that uh, open source? Uh, not currently, no. Is there anybody we've missed from the call? Klaus. Yeah. So, um, I'm personally, I'm involved in uh, Kubeless. And, and Kubeless is also starting to uh, support um, uh, cloud events. But I, I have to check with the uh, um, Kubeless developers what exactly will be possible. And just to... Uh, um, so that I have it for the notes, and I, I've looked at Kubeless, but I'm not sure I could say it as accurately as you. Um, what are the like sort of what are the key attributes of Kubeless as a fast in terms of what it supports for either um, emitting or consuming events? But um, it, I think it's mostly about uh, consuming. It comes with uh, support for um, Kafka and HTTP. There was a note on the um, serverless working group, I think, about like supporting Kubernetes events natively. I didn't have a chance to look at the code, but I saw the announcement. Really? Um, so I, I know there's a related project uh, that um, was emitting um, events from Kubernetes, but I think that's not directly part of Kubeless. Okay, I'll have to look up on it, but thanks. I think they called it KubeWatch or something, but yeah. I would have to check with the others. Yeah, this is Doug. I'm, I'm still checking on the IBM side. Um, obviously, since we use OpenWhisk, I'm trying to see what kind of integration we can do there. I'm assuming it's, it's more on the consumption side than producing side, but I'm still doing some investigation. I'll let you guys know. And sir, to, to your comment about uh, Kubernetes events, it is something that we've talked about adding into dispatch, but I don't believe it's scheduled to be implemented yet. Trying to find find if I have any reference to that. There's so much happening; it's hard to keep up with it all. <laughs> all right. So it looks like we have, you know, everyone is doing some initial work around cloud events. Uh, I do wonder how we can how we would be able to stitch all of these together or uh, show interoperability between the various services. So um, we're working on um, 
some like sort of Kubernetes based, Istio based kind of um, control plane stuff. I don't know if, I mean, Kubeless is obviously Kubernetes um, Istio based. I don't know if anybody else is. Yeah, Dispatch is on top of Kubernetes. So they might, go, go ahead. For, for, I think for a demo, what, one thing we should probably think about is a kind of uh, uh, if then scenario where we, um, that is easy for us, all of us to do um, and to realize like you know, there's, a, there's some, some, something that happens and have an implementation of that. And then there's a um, routing, routing of some sort from peer to peer to have the middleware involved to get that to the receiver and then the receiver does something. But, um, and that implemented in a vari variety of different um, infrastructures and then go and plug, plug and play them basically to make it one very simple generic scenario where the focus is on the interop and not necessarily on the scenario per se. The scenario can be fairly um, straightforward. It's very, very simple basically because we, um, want to show that it works from everywhere to everywhere. That's something I would prefer instead of doing it something that is, uh, you know, more aligned with um, uh, a pragmatic or practical um, solution. Yeah, when we were first talking about interrupt demo, I was kind of thinking, because we had like kind of set aside the whole like oh, how oh, these yeah. things get set up that we could just have the like a one event sort, like magic happens for how these things are connected then an event source, an event source emits an event, right? That then triggers functions on different destinations, right? So you could have like, so like we could construct it so that we have a like cloud Firestore project or Google Cloud Sur Storage project that emits an event, right? That goes through our little prototype. And then that um, with some kind of hokey registration system that we do behind the scenes, or maybe we put in a file so it, it's clear that we can, other people can add to it. You know, we do, or GitHub just like some kind of like placeholder connector thing, registration. And then, um, and then we can show how that is consumed at different places. Is that the kind of thing you're thinking of, Clemens? Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking more to go and, and normalize on the event. Yeah, exactly. Uh, rather than, so basically everybody builds, everybody builds the same scenario where the event ultimately, a, a, a set of events, not one, but a set of events are representing effectively the same thing. So I'll, I'll give you the example of, of, in, of inserting something into uh, creating a new blob or creating, let's, let's make it super abstract, create a new object. Um, the create new object, if we make a create new object and delete object, gesture. Um, that's something that um, is generic enough so that everybody can go and, and, and interpret that in a way that it makes sense for some emitting system. But we don't, for, the, for, the, for the demo, we can keep it very abstract. And then we can have emitters from different contexts, which go and emit that sort of event. And then we have uh, handlers on the other side that handle that event. And really this, the constant piece um, that sits in the middle between is the event per se. So we've been normalizing effectively on that event as the, the interop anchor. So we would all be demoing, like we're using the same format. In theory, there's interop. I mean, I think the most compelling demo would be like one provider emits an event and somebody else consumes it, right? Yeah, I, I, I'd be happy if we had N providers and M consumers and we could go and just make them all plug, 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 in, plug together. Um, but for that, we need to have a, um, all, the, all the emitters obviously need to be different implementations of the same thing. And that's why I'm for something that's very simple and, and, and canonical. Is there a fairly generic like pub subsystem that can sit in the middle that everybody can hook into? Well, I think the key thing is, is that we're, I, like certainly Google has has followed the like sort of this model of being able to subscribe to a very granular event and so the 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 idea that we would just create a fire hose events to uh, to a topic is not is not ideal for demonstrating the power of this venting system from our perspective 
And so we don't want to normalize on something that we think is, um, it, it doesn't take advantage of some of the opportunities of um, this format. I'd also say that it might make sense to have something that's more tangible for end users to understand what is this object and why, why does it matter to me? Yeah, I mean, like sort of our, one of the classic examples is like either like somebody puts something in a data store and it kicks off some kind of a business analysis, right? Data analysis, or like, you know, the classic, I'm going to put an image on um, some kind of like, we all have like many of the folks in the room <laughs> have cloud storage things, right? Um, and then, um, you know, and then that like, does something with it. Uh, um, thumbnails. Thumbnails, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thumbnailing is our canonical example for event grid and storage. So that's the, uh, that seems to be a classic by now. Exactly. So um, I, I, would, I just wish there was a better demo than that. I'm getting tired of that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a demo which is like, um, it kicks off a, uh, like a safety filter, right? You could you can go and insert a customer a new lead into a sales database and then uh, send them spam right away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, I guess we could we could have uh, an image have an image put someplace and then watermark it with uh, cloud events. Oh, I like that. That's cute. That's actually the then we could share it on social media. Um, I love that idea. So then we have, um, what was the other one? So the, you could have the like user signs up for web, like for app, add lead in CRM, right? Like, so that like, you know, you, that's sort of general like sort of database event to, um, like to uh, app. I'm impressed with your use of special characters there. <laughs> I know all the, I knew the Google Docs tricks before I worked here. <laughs> So Louis, Klaus, Chad, comments, thoughts on ideas? I like the watermark idea. I mean, we could show how anything can admit an event based off the various cloud storage solutions that we have. And then any of the, any of the consumers on the other end, each have their own set of functions or workers or whatever you want to call them and and uh, but they receive the event because they know what that event type looks like um, so any, any publisher can publish onto you know some media area and then any of the consumers can consume any of those messages because they know exactly what the format looks like and they all end up pushing to some twitter account or something with the uh with the watermark image i mean it is sort of the quintessential example of a serverless today an event driven apps it's hard to get away from it yeah we could all put our logo on the watermark yeah like yeah um, that's true too okay logo and cloud events logo would be very that is would be like a very genuine kind of view but i'd like to also have the i mean i do think it's simpler to just have um an example of an event that we're like for a first pass getting an event where all of the data is in the event and you can operate on text um, might be easier for people to like understand the concept because the code is much simpler. It doesn't depend on other libraries and um, it would also be inclusive of the folks who don't have storage um, offerings. Uh, it's just an idea. Um, and it might pull in some of the like I write this to a database, like, so ad lead in, you know, like post to Slack, like in my dreams, right? This would inspire the, like the Slacks and the CRMs to be like, oh, wow, we should consume 
Hot events. Yeah, that's that's why I'm always using. I like I used to insert new sales lead thing as a as an example because that actually picks up a bunch of the the. It's something that lots of people can relate to um, when they're building business apps. And then I basically say, hey, and you react to this by creating an extension to your application. And that's something that seems to be resonating. I'm not saying we're, we should use that exact thing, but using something that's a very canonical database record um, that people can, can relate to would be very useful. Because ultimately, I think for all the cases where the events are not, or sorry, very many cases where the events are not necessarily about motions of infrastructure, like insert something into a blob, um, lots of those will be about state changes in databases. So, um, so do you, I think that that really resonates. Does anybody have any other um, specifics on the scenarios or should we talk about like, what are the next steps to get us from here to there? So, so I just posted a link out that's um, an example from dispatch where we did a buzzword bingo Slack bot. In the chat? Yeah. Yeah, I see. <laughs> So yeah, since, you're, since you're talking about Slack, this was one example that we came up with that if you just, put in the right number of buzzwords and posting on the Slack, it will come back with bingo. Now that's and, and this is Chad, just, just one more thought on that. I might be able to get events emitted from something like NetSuite or PeopleSoft into some cloud events format, which is you know, pretty big enterprise apps. And, uh, and then anybody could process for example, a new record or a change record or something. So I, I need to go and, and explore that a little more. Um, I have to jump into another call right now, but um, you know, count us in for whatever we end up deciding on for this. And I've got a couple of people helping out with the work. So yeah, I think that'd be very exciting, Chad, to actually have a, a real, like a, um, a higher level app that also showed examples of these events. Okay, I'll, I'll follow up on that. Super. All right, other ideas? Or should we move on to next steps? We're looking over some of our other demos. You know, we kind of, we, we have a blog demo as well. So if you look in the examples, there's some additional ones, but. So, uh, so practically speaking, for the blog demo, that's gonna be very, um, simple for us to go and hook up as a um as a prototype because we can go and push to a function and the function basically does a transformation and then pushes to wherever you want it um in as a cloud event so that's that's going to be very practically easy in in you know, within the the existing production uh, system so we're that part so that part is going to be simple and then we have to go and, and figure out whether for the other one whether our crm people want to go and, and play with that so if, if we chose if we chose a crm, a CRM? Huh? you mean our microsoft has a crm sorry if i'm yeah we have a dynamics 365 crm um i should put this up with microsoft um, so I think the next step would be to define pro like proposed specific events, right? We, I mean, this was part of our point one milestone anyhow, right? Um, because I, I think there'll be, um, I think, our cloud storage events don't actually put the, like we don't encode the actual image in the event. And I think that that is desirable because you might not want to act on the whole image and that's like a potentially a lot of data. You should have, you should have a link in it. So yeah, there's a reference. Yeah. Um, but, um, but like, so I expect that there'll be some things to work out in that that, that detail, which I think would be healthy for the yeah. application. Um, so, uh, so we have the sort of. Uh, yeah, I think 
I'd, I'd say that if, if it were, were a link, then we would need to worry about credentials. Access for, for that. Although I think that from a specification standpoint, we would want to make sure that we allowed for, um, like I wouldn't want to set everybody's expectation that images have to be public to use cloud events. So yeah, I'd yeah. want to make sure that we wrote down, this is how you would do it with access stuff. And right. for our demo, we're not doing that. <laughs> right. right. Um, so. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's actually good to make a point of that, that you know, if you go and send a, a cloud event and you're ref referencing a, uh, a resource in that cloud event, the receiving that cloud event doesn't give you uh, access to that resource necessarily. It just says something changed. And if you want to get the details, then you still need to have a way around it to go and access it. I don't think that necessarily there's that implication that you always, you know, if you're, if you're um, allowed to receive the event, that you're also allowed to receive all access to the resource. Yeah, I think that that's an important point to make clear that will actually make people more excited about using cloud events. You know, another facet of this is uh, multiple language support. Being able to use C Sharp, Python, et cetera, Go. Yeah, I think that would be great to have a demo. Well, we will definitely do everything in C Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> but there, uh -huh. there, there, there was a reason I mentioned that one. <laughs> no, but you would actually be surprised how uh, multilingual we are inside. But um, I think for the for the audience, I think we are the natural purveyor of C sharp code. Yeah. Yeah. So this simulator that we have can support a number of different languages in terms of the the functions that we can evaluate. Great. So um, for the create object and delete object that's a database object, we have lots of different kinds of, who has data store, like, so we have like Firestore, which is like a NoSQL database. Um, uh, who else has a data store that could turn into a cloud event? I, I know that Minio doesn't support cloud event natively, but they do support uh, eventing. Well, what was the first Minio? thing you said? Anita? No, Minio. Minio. Yeah, so from an architectural perspective, from the CR, like from the CRM system um, that I was talking about, um, I was not thinking about that being a database raised event, but it's effectively when that is logically created inside the CRM app, the CRM app raises that as an event. So it's not a, it's not a trigger, but rather a something that the CRM app does as a, um, you know, I, I just created a new object inside of it. And in addition to storing it, I'm also going to go and raise an event about it. That's how I thought of it. Yeah, and what I was kind of thinking we could potentially do with Firestore is it's a general database, but it, people often use it to keep their like lists of users. So you could imagine that it's user create event, like that you, you it's a, it, we could have an example of like, look, we receive a general database event and raise a application level event, right? So it would sort of show the code of how someone did that. Like, you know, like for, like a lot of our customers are, are themselves creating things like CRMs and whatnot that have users. I mean, that's, I think at that point, it's an implementation detail, but the, uh, I think, 
Um, and if you want to go and delegate that raising up that event to your data database, I think that's certainly fine. Right. I'm just trying to think of the um, interop example there. I think that that would be like, then we would have a receiver, right? So then we would sort of have a receiver that posts. So sort of multiple receivers that act on it. And you could imagine that I'm now contriving a scenario in my head. Yes, sir. Yeah. That like when a customer is created, that some you know some system posts yeah. to Slack and some other system does something else with it. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, literally, this the 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 send spam was uh, um, semi serious. Um, you often have uh, these um, situations where you sign up to something and then um, the. Um, that company has a house in-house fair the next week, and so you get an invite right away for to that in-house fair just because the company just got to know you. And so that's a tactical extension that you can very nicely do with an event-driven thing. Yeah. So another thought is to do kind of a trace route by taking consuming an event adding a designation onto into the data, just tech, you know, text-wise saying received by, and then forwarding it on to another service. And if there's multiple services, you know, you could put in a randomization of do I send it does dispatch send it to Google or does it send it to Microsoft? And then Microsoft decides, does it send it back to dispatch or Google, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mean just it bounces, just it bounces around so you can demonstrate that it actually went through um, that many systems? Yeah, yeah. That, that it was uh, accepted and it, it was consumed and then a new event was produced. Ah. And, and so when you think think about interrupt, you should be able to accept it from anywhere and deliver it to someplace else. And have, yes. have a consumable. Yeah, that's true. If the if the relationships if the relationships for the routes effectively are set up, I agree with you. Yeah, I think the routing where um, I don't know if we're there yet to have consistent routing across multiple providers. Yeah, the, the routing is so one of the things that is in the um, that we need to agree on, I think, for practical interop. In addition to that, so I, I did already a bunch of the work. If you might have seen from the PR on on, H, on HTTP mapping, um, but there's a, f a a few things that we need to go and figure out um, um, to make the HTTP interop work. And I wrote that in the in the email, um, I think Friday, um, that I sent to the group because we need to have a. Um, there's a few practical. Things like needing to register a target with the publisher for DDoS protection and security. Um, that's common. That like AWS does that for um, SNS, and we do that for EventGrid. Um, there is the question of where do you place a token, and if you look at around the world and what people do for webhooks, there's 500 different ways of doing that. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a few practical things we need to go and arrive on and um, uh, in terms of intro. So there will be a few for a demo that we want to show within a very short time, there's going to be a bunch of warts. Um, and we'll probably have to go live with those warts, but just put them on the table, what they, they those might be. Because I think one of the things that we can do as a, as a, as an, as an, as a side effect of this interop work is actually go and define a profile for what a webhook really is and then uh, publish that. And I think that's even orthogonal to what we do. Well, it's, it's related, but it's not necessarily only for cloud events um, that we say, hey, you do an HTTP post and the HTTP post is done with authorization in the following way. And 
um, for DDoS protection, you need to have a registration gesture. And then so, yeah, I think that um, I just want to pause you there, Clemens, because I think that we've basically, until we get on, we, we agreed like a long time ago that this, how we set up the connections is outside of the scope of the spec. And I think we'll make a lot of progress, particularly the things that can be open in, in sharing what we're all doing to set up these things. And that'll move the conversation forward. But I agree, like in the next few weeks, deciding all those things is, is I don't think practical. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna work. So basically when, when for all the, the delivery, the details of the delivery, the, the delivery, like the, the, the true, like specifically is the security pieces. Um, there will be some, um, um, special accommodations effectively for every, certainly for every target and, and mostly for every middleware that's there. And then we have to go and, and figure out over the fullness of time, as people say, how to, how to even those out. Yeah. So like, I think we should say, assume for the purpose of this demo setup is not, <laughs> is like behind the scenes non-standard, you know, like, you know, my, you know, so individual group, like, you know, it's sort of individual, individual projects might demo that, but not core part of interop, right? So we want to focus on events generated and consumed in the same format. And how that helps in some way. Okay. So let me put this up here. Um, so then, does somebody want to volunteer to create these, a draft of these storage events, create and delete? We already have some, but we've got to take, like, you know, we, we had to start with either the Google Cloud storage one or the um, Microsoft one and just turn it into something that matches the cloud event spec. Um, I mean, we, we have those events. It's just that I have my hands kind of full with uh, some of the other things already. Yeah, I, um, I don't know what I can do this week, but I could definitely draft something up. Yeah, if I mean, if you take a look around what what other what the platform platforms are emitting, I think they're all fairly similar. Yeah, I mean, we have examples in the repo. Yeah. Um. Although I don't know if I've, I've I've looked at the Amazon one quite a bit, but not the Microsoft one. Clemens, do you think you could just um, add to the repo or send me the um, an example of Microsoft? I can. Yeah, I can send you. Uh, we have a we have a doc page where that's got. Where it's got. Um, maybe I can paste it. Thanks for digging that up for me. Okay. <clears throat> Oops. So do we see each consumer subscribing to each producer individually or having a central infrastructure thing in place? I, I think that's part of, I think that's part of this common, the, 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 this is config, config dependent because all of those things will be different. Um, I think that's part of the, the we're going to go and combine things. Um, but, and we're going to make sure that the flow is compliance, but, I don't think the subscription gesture per se is something we can be prescriptive about. And I, I'm kind of, everybody will want to show their own thing, right? Well, I don't, I'm not saying be necessarily prescriptive as much as I'm just worrying about, okay, I want to write, let's say I want to write a, a consumer 
how many different types of ways do I need to connect up to consumers? I mean, to, to producers is what I'm trying to worry about in, in the time frame. Well, I think that what we'll each have to do is figure out what other consumer or producer is easy. Like, I, I think that at minimum, we will have sort of like sort of a plan. Uh, so this is demo assumptions. So I think that what Clemens <laughs> proposed, I think is a great minimum bar. So minimum, same format um, used within a cloud provider and allows, um, who was it that had the desktop tool? Hawaii? That was Huawei. Huawei. Yes, Louis, we got the desktop tool. So we'll be able to support that common format. Right, and allows right, to support local evaluation of functions from multiple providers. Yep. Right. Yeah, they, they dispatch consumers as well. Yeah, we can have multiple consumers for certain. Well, I think it's the, how do you hook up the consumer to the emitter is the question. Yeah, I think, and I think that's, that's going to be difficult to say we're going to do it this way because we're just not that, that far yet. Right, so I think that first, like, let's, let's see who gets there first with, like, different, like, I think we've all got to, like, sort of figure out what this stuff looks like. And then, um, and then we can see whether we can, I think we, we should have like, if we get that far, we should get pairs of people to hook up with each other. And something we could consider is that if we, if we get some traction around having our different things work, then we could have like, maybe we could have an evening hack day or something like, you know, for those of us who are gonna be at KubeCon in person, we could have a like, let's all make some cloud events. And then maybe we could get other people who are there to work on adding cloud events to their systems. So just, that, working it or just, just out of curiosity, is it, is it not worthwhile at all to try to produce sort of an event hub that subscribes to all the producers and then each subscriber can subscribe just to that one event hub and get all the events from all the producers? I, th I think the challenge is, is that we have not aligned on what it means to have, to register a trigger and what exactly that is. And so while that's interesting, um, I think that the, it may be ambitious for three weeks from now. So I think that, you know, I mean, Austin's not here and I know that he's very much interested, like they have their gateway. So I think we need to sort of hear from the people who would do those things, how they envision it. Um, and I think that if we move forward and we have, these are the specific events we're going to interrupt with, and there's still some detail to work out about, I'm sure, right? We'll be like, oh no, that's not what I imagined it to be. Um, when we get into the exact format, that that will then illustrate what exactly the interrupt is. And then, um, so, yeah, I agree. The, 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 so what I wrote down for the HTTP binding piece, um, I think that might be a good baseline to start from, but then there are still, and I'm actually, I'm intentionally staying away from some particulars. Like I'm not prescribing which HTTP methods you should be using because people might be saying, yeah, for, well, for this thing, you should use a put and for this you should be opposed. And I also want to have this work for um, soliciting in events from, from a different place. And so I just made it a mapping into the HTTP message. And then, and then I think for a prototype, as far as you can go is you can say, I'm going to push those events with that HTTP message format effectively. I'm using HTTP post and I'm going to react to HTTP posts on my function, uh, my HTTP gateway for the functions. But then there's, the, and, but then still there's going to be a bunch of things which are unresolved in terms of, you know, what is the, what is the token that I need to go and get at this thing? Or do I need to have an API key and, and how does all those things work? We're not going to get to that. We're not going to get to that. Um, and so I think that will end up being something that for each pair of publisher and consumer, uh, and I include middleware in the middle, in the middle into that, because that's being a, you know, a, a consumer on behalf of, in that case, um, I think that will be custom. 
So I have to duck out. I'm sorry, I have to run to my next meeting. But um, I'll take with this action item. Thanks for pasting that in, Clemens, and then I'll catch up on the notes with whatever the rest of you. So, so, so one last thing is I, I'll also get my team to document how to bring dispatch up on both uh, uh, AK, e, AKS and GKE. And that might also help with uh, having a independent project running on each of, the, each of those clouds. Mm -hmm. Fine. All right, anything else? That was a good, that was a good meeting. What, when is the next one? Yeah, I think we might be gated on Sarah doing the storage, create and delete thing. Okay. Unless Clemens, you want to send out your, um, your event grid stuff as a, as a proposal for a starting point. Um, I have, a, I think I have a version of that even in the, um, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can try. It's, I'm, I'm already spending most of my day on this, so. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I can, I, let's, I would say let's give Sarah a day because I don't want to, I don't want to be overriding her. No, no, that makes sense. I just didn't want to wait a week because I, I thought I heard her say, I was, I, I apologize, I was a little bit distracted, but I thought I heard her say she may not get to it this week and I think that might be pushing it out a little. Yeah, if, if, uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's see. I, I'll, uh, if, if nothing shows up, then I'm going to do that uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great. And, and I think to, to Sarah's point, we need to circle around with Boston since he can make the meeting. And uh, yeah, see see what see what they're doing with respect to their event gateway as well. So if 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 everybody on the call, if you guys could uh, take a look at my my HTTP PR, um, and and also the JSON mapping, I have two of those. Um, that'd be useful because I think that's a that's a baseline for the HTTP um, uh, requests. And as I wrote in that email, I think there's a there's a last mile problem as we just also. Uh, called out. I'm not sure gonna how much we can go and resolve that um, in terms of off and DDoS protection and all those things. It would be nice if we eventually could. Um, but I'm thinking that's a um, that's a good step towards that. Um, I also have MQTT and MQP mappings already written. Um, I just don't want to uh, um, overload people with review stuff, so I'm holding those, holding off on those. Um, but I just wrote those NKTT and NKP mappings just to prove that what we have is uh, will go and map cleanly into those. Um, and they sit in my personal repo. Sounds good to me. I'd love to look at those if you don't mind. Uh, Kevin. Uh, go to, go to uh, Clemens V slash spec in GitHub. Uh -huh. And then you find there's an NKTT transport and an MQP binding, oddly differently named branch. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find them there. Great, thank you. So Clemens V slash spec, and then you just look at the branches, and then there's one for NQP and one for NQTT. And you can thank you. Welcome. Should we plan on another meeting this week, or just wait for the weekly phone call Thursday? I would prefer a working meeting um, in addition to that to the weekly meeting. Yeah. We want. Uh, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I'll be traveling on um, on Thursday, Friday. So Friday is not going to be possible for me. So Thursday in the morning, I can do it. I could go it um, before our meeting. I would probably prefer for my travel schedule. So it's like eight to nine. If you want to do it Thursday. All right. Tell you what. Let, let me let me throw out another doodle. Okay. And see how we can converge. I know that Doug is busy on Thursday. Yeah, obviously no way for me though. And, and it would be nice to have Sarah back on. As, yeah. as a, so. All right. Okay. I'll send, I'll send that out and, you know, if not this week, then we, could, we might be able to do the same time next week as well. Yeah, next Monday would be fine. Yeah, and otherwise we still have the email channel, so we should go and try it using that. Right. That's 
it's it's a proven medium. We don't have to do everything synchronously. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks all. Okay. Bye, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.